Today, I'm going to show you how to build this input animation from scratch. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the HTML, I already have a head tag with a link to the font family I'm going to use for this project. And then beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. So to get started, I'm going to jump inside of the body tags of the HTML. And first, I'm going to create a div with a class of form. And this will essentially hold the entire element on the page. And then within that form, I'm going to have two elements. I'm going to have an input and a label. So first, I'm going to include an input with a type of text. It will have an ID of email because it will be an email input field. I'm going to give it a class of form input and I'm also going to set autocomplete to off. Next, I'm going to work on the label for the input. So beneath this, I'm going to create a label element and it's going to be for that email. So I'm going to put the email ID here. And for this, I'm going to give it a class of form label. And I want this to include the actual label that we want to be visible to the user. So here I'm going to write the word email. Great, so now we have an input field and a label on the page. So now we can jump inside of the CSS to start applying styling to the project. So first I add SCSS as a preprocessor, which allows me to nest CSS elements so that way my code will be really organized. And it also allows you to declare variables. So I already picked all of the color variables that I want for this project. So I'm just going to paste them here. So now I have all my colors defined for the project and also a border radius. And so beneath this, I'm just going to add some basic styling. I usually add a box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding set to zero. So that way I have full control over the spacing in the project. So beneath this, I'm actually going to get started on the styling. So first I'm going to reference the body. And first I'm going to add the font family I want to use for this project. So I'm just going to reference the font family and set it to the font that I already defined in the header. Then I'm going to set the height of it to 100% of the viewport height. And I'm also going to set the display of it to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have an entire crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And with the display set to grid, I'm going to justify the content and align the items in the center. So that way they'll be in the center of the page. I'm also going to increase the font size to 1.2 REM and set a particular background color. Then beneath this, I'm going to start working on the actual form. So referencing the HTML, we have a div class of form, and then we have a form input for the input and a form label for the label. So now I'm going to reference these classes in the CSS. So here I'm going to write form. And for that form, I'm going to set the position of it to relative, and I'm also going to specify the width to 20 REM. Then within this form, I'm going to reference the input by writing an input. And again, the reason why I can do this is because I added SCSS as a preprocessor here. So for that input, I'm going to set the position of it to absolute. I'm going to set the top and left positioning to zero. I'm going to set the width to 100%, the height to 100%. I'm also going to add a border of two pixels solid and a light gray. I'm also going to add a border radius. Now, if I were to type inside of this input field, you can see that it does not have the different font family that we added on earlier on the project. So to fix that, I'm going to set the font family to inherit and the font size to inherit. So now if I were to type inside of that input field, you can see that the text has different styling. I'm also going to set the color to white, the outline to none, and I'm going to increase the padding. I also don't want there to be a background for the input field, so I'm going to set the background to none. So now we just have this outline. I actually want to increase that border radius a little bit, so I'm going to go back up to my variable and just set this 2.5. Then beneath this, I'm going to add some hover and focus states for that input field. So I'm going to write and hover, which attaches a hover state to this input element. And for this hover state, I'm going to add a different border color. And for the focus state, I'm also going to add a different border color.
So we can see now when I hover over it, the color changes slightly, and when I tap into it, it's a different color as well. Next, I'm going to work on the label. Now it's a little bit difficult to see right now because a label is set to a dark color and the background is dark as well, but it's right here. So I'm going to apply some styling to that. So beneath this, I'm going to write and label, which references the class for that label. And for this, I'm going to set the position of it to absolute because I want full control over the placement of that label. For this label, I'm going to set a particular left and top positioning. I'm going to set some padding and I'm going to set the color to white. Now you can see that when the mouse is actually over that word email, it looks one way, but when it's over the entire input field, it looks different. So I want it to be consistent. So here I'm going to set the cursor to text. So that way, if I'm over that word email, it looks the same as it does when it's over the input field. I'm also going to add a transition here because I'm going to want it to transition from looking like a placeholder to going upwards. So here I'm going to add a transition for the top, left, and the font size. And I want all of these transitions to occur at the same time, so I'm going to keep the timing the same and the easing function the same. So now if I type inside of that input field, we obviously there is an issue because there's an overlap between the label and the input content. Going back to the HTML, since the label is going to act like the placeholder for that input field, I'm actually going to set the placeholder here to an empty string. And I actually want the entire element to be a little taller. So here under the width, I'm also going to specify the height to three REM. Great, so now we can actually start working on the functionality for this input field. So if I were to tap inside of this input field, we can see that it has the focus state. And if I were to type inside of it, we obviously see that there is overlap. So for this input field, I want to modify this label when this is in the focus state. I want the email to go up and I want it to be a smaller font size. So beneath all of this work, I'm going to reference the form input. So when that input is in the focus state, I want it to change a sibling element. So I'm going to add the sibling selector and the element that I want to change is the form label. So going back up to the HTML, we can see that the input and the label are sibling elements because they're on the same level playing field, right? So input is right next to label. It's not like label is nested inside of a div or any other kind of element. So because these elements are side by side, I can use that sibling selector to call it. So I'm basically saying here is that when this input is in the focus state, I want to change this label. So what do I want to change about this label? Well, I want to move its position. I want it to go up and I want the font size to be reduced. So here I'm going to set the top to a negative 0.5 REM. So let's see what happens. If I tap into it, we can see that it moves upwards. Now I also want to change the font size. So here I'm going to change the font size to 0.8 REM. So now if I tap into it, we can see that it gets smaller. I'm also going to want to modify the left position slightly. So I'm also going to set the left to 0.8 REM. So now if I tap into it, we can see how it animates. Now we have an issue because there's an overlap between the input and the label. So in order to fix that, I'm going to go under that label and I'm going to set the background color to the same background color of the page. So now if we tap into it, it has a background color so we can clearly see that label. Great, so now I can freely type inside of this input field and it looks really good, but when I tap away from it, the email goes back to its original position because what we said here was that when that form input is in the focus state, I want the label to be in this position. But now, if there's actually content within that input field, I don't want the label to go back to the original position. I want it to stay in this position. So we need to expand on this code a little bit. So I want to retain this position when there's content within that input field. So I'm going to add a comma because I'm going to want to add the styling to another state. So here I'm going to say form input, and then I'm going to add the not selector, and then I'm going to say placeholder shown. So this is basically saying that when the form input is not showing a placeholder, which means that there's content inside of it, and 
the form input is not in the focus state, which means that I clicked outside of it. I also want the form label to have that same treatment. So here I'm saying sibling form label. So what this is basically saying is that when that form input is not showing the placeholder, meaning that there's some content within it, and that form input is not in the focus state, which means that I tapped outside of it and I'm on another element, I still want that form label to have that same treatment. So now we can actually see that it changed. I see that label and the content. So now I know it's working because I see that email and that content. Now, if I were to just delete this not for a second, it might be a little clear. So I'm just going to delete this not. So here I wrote form input placeholder shown, which means if the placeholder is shown and the element is not in the focus state, I want the form label to be in the state. So that's the state that we have right now. So I deleted all of the content. There's nothing in the input field. And if I were to tap away from it, meaning that the focus is not on that element, we can see that it still holds that state but I don't want it to look like this when there's no content in here. I only want this to be in the state when there is some content in here. So that's why I added the not. So now we have a label and when I tap into it, I can write some text. And when I tap away from it, it still retains that state. So there you go. That's how I created this animating input field from scratch. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.